What is going on guys, DBG here, and this is episode number 7 of the No Money Spend Squad. So again, this is pretty much a daily thing at this stage, so yeah, um, this is just going to be showing you guys what I've been doing to build up this squad. So this squad's looking good right now, it's pretty much looking like this, my actual squad. So we've got Derek Rose fully upgraded, Lonnie Walker, Gerald Green, Channing Fry, Mirasan. Off the bench, we've got Daryl Armstrong, we've got Terrence Ferguson, Janan Musa, Bielitsa, Bradley, Charlie Ward, Darius Miles, and Kata Bates Diop. So, if you guys notice, I've lost a lot of MT, and you're probably wondering where that MT's gone. So, as you guys can see, I've got 18, I've got, or sorry, 10 bids. Like, I've been outbid on two of these. I'm going to bid up to, I'll bid 2050. That is my max bid for all these. But I'm going to see how many Charlie Wards I can get, because, basically, if you, um... Look up Charlie Ward. His Emerald, you can sometimes pick it up for around 2,000-ish MT. I wish I got him yesterday. He would have been around that price. And I'm hoping to get them on bids because it is kind of early in the morning. Well, America time is very early in the morning. But if you look for a Sapphire Charlie Ward, he goes for around 3.5-4K MT. He's actually gone down in price. He was around over 4K MT at one stage. 3,150, that... He'll, I think he might go up from that, but basically, all you have to do is play, score 10 points with him in one game, and he goes up to Sapphire. It is so easy to do, and you will upgrade him to a Sapphire in one game. So, for example, if 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, or 10 of these guys. If I manage to win all 10 of these guys, I know one was up for 3,100. I can probably sell them off for 3,300 with tax and stuff. It's probably around a profit of 1,000 MT for each of these, so that'll be a lot of MT just for one game, like an extra 1,000 MT per game. And then there's also, what do I, so if you look up Charlie Ward and his next evolution, so Charlie Ward is, he goes up to a Ruby, and his Ruby right now, 12, 13K, 10K MT, I don't think you're gonna make as much of a profit because it is kind, it's not that easy to get him. So Charlie Ward, I've been using him for Actually, in four games, or five games, with him, I've managed to get about half of the points. I've managed to get about half of the three point, or well over half of the three points. I've made nearly half that one finished. Obviously, you have to play 10 games with him. But I don't think it's worth it because he's only 10k MT. I do not think it's worth it at that price. And then you have to look at Daryl Armstrong, who is so good in game. Like, Daryl Armstrong is a beast. But again, he's an Evo card. So, he actually might be a good card to pick up. I want to see what his maximum buyout is. He actually takes quite a while to uh, evolve. You're not going to do that that quickly. So let's see. Let's put it up to 7,000. 7, no. The auction house filters are still broken, which is a little bit unfortunate. 8,100 really. Um, I just want them to show up. Like I know for a fact uh, Charlie Ward, or not Charlie Ward, Daryl Armstrong is well under 14k. But you just can't find him. Like, look at that, like, the auction filters are actually getting worse. It's ridiculous. Like, you literally can't snipe because the filters are so bad. Okay, so he's 9k MT. There's so many of them up that I'm just going to scroll to the end and I'll, uh, I'll zoom through it. But, like, 5k MT, that is so cheap for this card. Wow. Like, I bought mine for, like, 6, 7k yesterday. And I thought that that was the cheapest he was going to go. But he is so, so cheap. So let's just assume you can probably pick him up for around 4k MT on open bid. 4.5k, my god, he's cheap. He is so cheap. What's he going for in bids? Like 3.6k. You can probably get him for. I can probably get him for his 3.1k. And I want to see what he is like as a ruby. What he goes for. So as a ruby, 24k. I, I know he does take quite a while. It is not an easy thing to do. But Sapphire, let's bid, say. I know I can get him for 4,000, so. Yeah, I'm going to leave that, and I'll do that in a different video. But, obviously, I've been a bit on these. Got the get my MT back. It's not a big deal. But, again, he is quite difficult to upgrade. Daryl Armstrong, you need to play 15 games with him. You score 200 points, get 100 assists. And you can probably score 200 points in 10 games. It'll be hard to get the 100 assists. It'll be hard to do it in 15 games. So, probably take about 20 games of triple threat, either online or offline, to get this, I'd say. Yeah, in around 20 games. And for those 20 games, you probably made a profit of around 20k. So again, it's around 1k a game. So evolving cards and flipping them is actually a fairly easy way of doing it. 
especially with how good Daryl Armstrong is. I'm guessing like he's gonna be so expensive as an amethyst, but again, it's so hard to get him to an amethyst. One player that we're about to get to an amethyst though is Channing Fry. So Channing Fry, I need one more game played on him. I think I got the 53 pointers, 400 points so quickly in like 15 games. And then uh, 50 rebounds took until about 22, 23 games. The rest of it was just getting the games played. Darius Miles, I will eventually get him upgraded. It's a little bit of a drag right now because you got to play rookie domination, hit the threes with him. He hit 18, like this is one game with him. Like, well, the three pointers were from one game. I hit 18 threes in a game with him. I, I can do that in four games. It's just I don't like playing rookie dumb. Charlie Ward, Daryl Armstrong. I might try to upgrade these. Well, I'm definitely going to upgrade Charlie Ward. I'm not that far off it. Uh, Daryl Armstrong, I'm definitely going to get into a Ruby, see how he gets on. Just even use him, because Armstrong is so good. Like, And Charlie Ward is insane. Like, His, his Emerald's terrible, but his Sapphire is a god. I guess Sapphire gets all the like rim running badges going to the basket. Unfortunately, he does pick up Steady Shooter when he comes to Ruby, but he also goes up to like 90 speed. His defense goes with Steel, goes 95. His three-point shot goes 88 in his unbelievable release. And yeah, so we're going to play a game of Triple Threat Offline. There's no point to me just playing games of Unlimited. I want to show you guys what I'm doing, what I'm kind of looking to do, because like some of these, obviously I'm not going to get all these cards. I'm not going to get most of these cards. But the, re the reason why I'm doing this is they are quick MT. It's quick flips. It's an easy way of making that little bit of MT. And you got to start small somewhere. Because some people don't like looking at the auction house and trying to snipe card after card after card. Some people don't... Um, like sniping jerseys, like buying and selling jerseys, like Naft Gaming. I'm one of the richest my team players in the world. I don't mean like rich in real life, but like has some of the most MT in the world. He's flipping jerseys and has like 1.7 million MT and he's just gotten J.R. Smith, hasn't spent a cent on the game. So there's different ways to go about it. And the good thing with this here is with evolutions and the amount of profit you can make out of them, you can literally grind the game while you're making, while you're essentially flipping cards, which is really good. So obviously triple trash. Uh, using these guys right here and um, upgrading these guys all of a sudden these one games um you're evolving cards you're getting better cards for your team like fry or you can you do what i'm probably gonna do with charlie ward get him up to a ruby and then sell him because i don't think i think he's good as a sapphire i don't think he gets much better as a ruby and also if not i can use him as a ruby or i can flip him and then just get one of the emeralds i guess make him a sapphire and just keep using sapphire make some profit that way but anyway now let's go on to the game of triple threat online this is our or offline this is our team we are currently we have 67 wins which is fairly good and now we're gonna get on to it all right we did not get a we didn't get a bad match up here matt barnes matt barnes could be interesting i have no idea what his release is like i did manage i did pick up matt barnes and i picked up a few of him and i'm gonna explain again another way of making mt at the end of this kind of gameplay but matt barnes could be an interesting character because his stats are fairly decent okay that release looks okay all right, so as usual, like I should be probably getting up the Armstrong assists, but we're doing our tanning fry tactic of forcing them into the step back behind the screen and shooting the threes. Again, like you're gonna miss an awful lot of shots in this game. At least shooting changed. Shooting's changed. Like I don't know how much it's changed. I don't know how significant it's been, but I know a lot of people are really happy with the way shooting is. They're saying bad releases don't go in as often, and good releases go in way more often, which is really good. Again, move a little bit, force them to step under the screen. Pull up for three, green light. Charlie Ward, a little bit of a slow release, but it is cash. Like he is, everyone's going mad about Armstrong. I'm talking about Charlie Ward because he is so cash. He's been one of my favorite players to use in Triple Threat so far. Well, he's one of my easiest players to grind because he just hits everything. And also he's a lockdown defender. So yeah, basically in these videos, I'm gonna be, as I said, I'm gonna show you guys what I'm actually doing. Like, I'm not playing Unlimited right now. I will definitely play Unlimited by the end of the month. I'm like 6-0 right now. Um, I'll probably end up using this account for some gameplays and stuff. But for now, I don't see there being much of a point in playing Unlimited until they fix the whole uh, glitch where people are dropping out of games and it's not you're not getting a win or a loss. There's just no point. Because again, like I've tried... I spent so much time trying to go 12-0 and, and I think that's where a lot of the source of my frustration with this game has been. Is going trying to go 12 and 0, winning 19 games, and still only being 10 and 0 because nine of the games are from drop hackers. When you're up 20 points, suddenly they force the game to quit. So that is definitely something that needs to be fixed before I'm going to heavily play unlimited. Because the last thing you want to do is be playing unlimited and for just every game to be dropped. Like it's hap it happens on PC, but like you expect it to happen on PC. There's drop hackers all 
non-stop on that system but you don't really expect on a console so hopefully that's fixed soon because if it's not fixed and they do what they did last year and put that glitch in the my team tournament it is game over those first couple of weeks are going to be a disaster i look at that that is just easy greens that is just greens pretty much every time with charlie ward he's one of the most underrated cards you can get again there's all the hype is about armstrong and nobody realized how good because charlie ward's emerald is terrible I don't get me wrong, his Emerald is terrible. But he becomes so good when you upgrade him, even to a Sapphire. Because he start, he gets the quick first step badge, bounce back, it's a bad shot. He gets quick first step badge, he gets stop and go and downhill when he goes Sapphire. So if I really wanted to, okay, it's a tie game. And I've already hit four threes, so we're gonna hit the three point thing anyway. So if I really wanted to, I could go with the point guard tactic of the blow by. You just burn Matt Barnes there, bad layup, but still. He's uh, He's got some of the most important badges for a point guard in this game. As well as being a great defender, great against steals. And just to say that, it's the commentator's curse, lads. It is the commentator's curse. Anytime I try to do something with a player, I say, oh, they're really good at this. They just suddenly can't do it. Hit Ward. Wide open, moving. Green. Let's go. And, like, this isn't that low of difficulty. I think this is on... It's 1.25 modifier, which is... Is it all-star? It's either... I know 1.5 superstar. I think it's all star. That's the difficulty this is on right now. So you cannot uh, go wrong with how well Charlie Ward shooting the ball. Bang, bang. Let's go. That's another green. This is easy greens every single time with the kind of hiding behind screens and forcing the AI to step under them tactic. Because the AI does not know how to guard screens. It's a way of beating off ball as well. The AI has no idea how to cut screens. They just step under them every single time. If you nudge forward, they'll step under. And I think that's going to be a way of really stopping off ballers. It's going to force them. If you use this tactic and your player standing in the corner uh, with their center, you're going to get an open shot every time. It works the same 5v5. Like, just nudge into it. Come on. I was poor. I was really bad by me. Get it back to him. Didn't do it right that time. So, wait for him to come there. Wait for him to come. No. Set the screen. Come on. Stepped under it. Into the screen. Like, look. We got a fairly open shot there. Could have greened it. But again, that could be a tactic to basically stop off ball in 5v5. Because it means they have to guide somebody in the screen. Whether it's the roll guy or whether it's the guy setting the screen. Things like that. But yeah. Handy enough win there. Okay. We get the chance to open the vault. I think I've opened the vault as much as anyone. I get this at least one in every three games. I, I get it so much. But I've gotten one five tokens, one ten tokens, one standard league pack, everything else but 500 MT. So I've gotten at least 500 MT. And of course, I have not got Cliff Hagen. So, let's see. We are still winning three of these. Did we win any of them? Okay, we won one Charlie Ward. So, send him to my auctions. That's not too bad at all. Do you, does auctions reset your evo if auctions resets your evo then i'm definitely definitely not sending this charlie ward to my auctions yes i'm going to fully evolve them before i do that but the rest of them for flipping it's going to be a case of i'm going to get him to ruby probably send them to my auctions build up a load of the other cards sell all them for a little bit of a profit and then bring this one back into my squad but yeah we have upgraded shanning for a high please tell me you can play center Okay, there was a there was a rumor, I don't know where it came from, that he couldn't play center when he uh, got evolved. Actually, I know where it came from. In like the screen where it says, where it says today in my team here, there was a thing where it was like Channing Fry, and then when it showed the um, Amethyst, he couldn't play center. Like Channing Fry, two Hall of Fame bats, Hall of Fame catch and shoot and pick and popper. He has got gold corner specials, gold putback boss, gold tire to score, gold steady shooter. Just look at what his stat. Look what happens to his stats. 90 post hook and fade. He's a 94 three point shot. Unfortunately, does he go up in three pointer with my coach? Yeah, he does. So he goes up to a 98 three point shot. 98. He's got 98 three point shot with Hall of Fame catch and shoot. Like he is going to be money. And I, at least I made a fair amount of MT off of um, selling my Nick Nurse because Terry Stotts is almost the same, to be honest. Um, He's also got some just unbelievable st other stats. 
His dunking stays the same, free throws 94. His block goes from like a 50 something to an 84, which is huge, especially because he's seven foot tall this year compared to six foot 11 last year. Interior defense got rebounding, he's, he's slow, but the way speed is in this game, that's not the biggest deal in the world. And as I said, with his badges and his jump shot and how good his release is, he can be like the counter to people standing in the key with Mirasan and Sean Bradley. He's the card that everyone, hopefully everyone got that Emerald card when he first came out, but he is just, and he may be, he can make an argument that he's the best card period of my team so anyway that is the video i was going to do kind of an mt making tactic on what i plan on doing to keep a fair amount of mt throughout the year on this account without doing any major time into sniping how to make mt through the auction house without basically dedicating your whole life to it but i didn't want this video i don't want this video to be 25 minutes so i'm going to talk about that in my next video so let me know if you guys are fine with these type of videos where more than actual gameplay involved, I talk about how I go about my team, what I'm looking for in players, different ways of doing things, why I'm evolving players, how I'm evolving players, how I'm making my MT, what I'm grinding. And you guys seem to be liking this, um, these type of videos, views are going up. So leave in the comments if you guys want to see more of this or you guys want to see more of just unlimited gameplay, which to be honest, I don't particularly like doing, but I know some of you guys obviously are fans of it. So anyway, yeah, that is the video. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe.